Hey Bucket Pond family, welcome back. Today we are doing an update on this 62 ounce sealed biosphere. It has been closed up for 150 days exactly. And we used the Wallstad method with a few minor modifications when we set this up. Now uh, we did include a piece of screen mesh down there and it has done really well. The screen mesh seems to be a very useful part of our systems. Our dayflower plants, our emergent plants, they're reaching up out of the water column. They are doing pretty good. They're not thriving, but they're growing. They're alive. The duckweed is doing well. Uh, but the plants that are within the water column, the submerged plants, uh, they aren't doing so good. And I'm starting to think that they might not be necessary for a proper ecosphere to develop and to function. You can see here the uh, water column is pretty bare, actually. It's pretty empty down there. But this tank has been working out quite well without any submerged plants. So up here near the surface, you can see our day flower. And it's doing pretty good. It's alive. It's green. It's growing. It has some roots and stems that have extended down into the water level. And it's raised up above the duckweed. Now this day flower grows very quickly. And it's a pretty hardy plant, so I'm not surprised to see it thriving, or at least surviving, within the ecosphere. Uh, we also have some algae that has grown up above the water surface. And I think that's pretty cool. Quite a bit of condensation in here, but that's normal. Um, just like, uh, like any other place on Earth, water evaporates and it rises to, you know, the atmosphere and then it falls back down as rain. In an ecosphere, this looks like condensation on the inside of the uh, <laughs> of the jar. But here the duckweed level is doing pretty well, uh, pretty nice as well. We have quite a bit of water meal. That's the very, very small duckweed. And some stringy green uh, strands in there as well. These stringy green plants uh, are actually another type of duckweed. This is called Florida mud midget. And uh, it's pretty interesting, but I'm glad that it's doing well. The duckweed level, uh, is thriving on its own. Now, duckweed is a bit like a substrate at the surface of the water. And uh, this substrate, this duckweed level, duckweed layer, uh, houses many unique species. You'd be surprised how many creatures actually live on the duckweed, just like uh, as if it was substrate or, you know, a layer of sand or soil. And here, among the water meal, and some of the larger pieces of duckweed, we have our small water mites. Yeah, these guys are actually arachnids. They are related to uh, spiders and ticks. And I assure you, they are harmless. They are more interested in feeding on these plants. But they are awesome little eight-legged creatures. And uh, we've seen them in a few of our other projects. They always intrigue me, though. And they're very interesting. And I'm happy to see them here. In some of our pond samples, we happened to capture some much larger water mites that were actually uh, yellow and black. So I look forward to incorporating them into a future project. Uh, but these guys here are doing very well. I believe that they feed on plants, on the material within the plant. I'm not quite sure, but I can tell that there's uh, quite a few of them in here. And they're surviving. They must be breeding. They've been in here for five months now with the lid closed. Now, just below the duckweed level, uh, just below the duckweed layer, I should say layer, <laughs> we have quite a few ostracods, or a couple of them, scooting around. And we have some other creatures as well. I saw at least one or two cyclops in here. And you'll see some movement among the duckweed leaves. Uh, there are larger duckweed plants in here as well. There's a cyclops, you know, a very shy one apparently. And some, some uh, ostracods scooting around. Just recently, we set up a new e ecosphere <laughs> with the intent of raising ostracods. So I like to see these guys in here. It uh, makes me happy. And looking closely, you'll see a few of our worms in here as well. Those little white creatures that are scooting around on the glass and swimming throughout the water column. These guys are the detritus worms that I talk about quite a bit. Um, here they're behaving a bit like planaria, but they're moving much faster. And they also will occasionally swim freely throughout the aquarium, throughout the ecosphere. But it's good to see them in here. 
and uh, that establishes three or four species that we've seen within just a few seconds of looking at the tank. Now looking at the water column itself, we find a few bladder snails in here, and uh, that's pretty nice. They are very small, but as we've seen in our other ecospheres, uh, bladder snails, if they do sustain themselves in a sealed project, they typically become much smaller. Or, you know, it's, I should say that they don't get very large. They stay about the size of a hatchling. And that's pretty interesting. I don't know if that's related to the amount of food they have available or the amount of oxygen. And now looking much lower in the ecosphere, uh, we have some of our moss. I believe this is java moss, but it's, uh, it's doing okay. Some strands are very nice and green, and other strands have wilted and turned brown. I see a bit of algae on the glass as well. And that's from the side that is facing the sun. This is a sunlight ecosphere, so a little algae is good. It actually powers the ecosystem. And there's a better look at the moss. It does look pretty nice. Uh, there are a few strands in the background that are struggling, but ultimately the moss is there. It is surviving. And we can see a few ostracods down here as well. Quite a few of them, actually. Uh, I see quite a bit of movement down here. We're going to have to uh, adjust our camera and see what's going on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow, guys, check it out. Look at that. Uh, yeah, I apologize. It's hard to get them in focus, but there's so many of them in here. Oh, my God. We've built uh, <laughs> an ostracod kingdom in here. I had no idea. Uh, again, I, I'm sorry. I know this isn't the best footage, but there's just so many of them in here. We have hundreds of ostracods, dozens upon dozens of them. Oh, my God. I'm trying to get them in focus. Uh, hang on. There, that might be a little better. There are so many ostracods in here. This is crazy. I had no idea that you could do this. I had no idea that this particular ecosphere could, ho could contain so many ostracods, so much activity in a sealed project, uh, airtight, sealed away from the world. And we're in here breeding armies of ostracods, you guys. And I see a few worms in here as well, some different worms. Quite a bit of mulm has built up in the bottom of the tank as well. That's pretty interesting. That's probably waste from the ostracods and maybe some of the, the plants that did not survive uh, when we, you know, set the tank up. But there's another look at them. There are so many ostracods in here, you guys. I am extremely happy. Um, as we, uh, as I said just a few minutes ago, we did set up another ecosphere recently with the intent of raising ostracods in large numbers in a sealed jar. And, uh, yeah, lo and behold, we've already been successful in that endeavor, in this project. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I had the why the the bad idea to uh, build this tank. The upload video, or excuse me, the the build video was uploaded in a uh, strange aspect ratio and somewhat hard to watch. But uh, yeah, this tank has just done so well. I will include a link to the setup video in the description in case you want to watch it. But we have so many ostracods in here, you guys. You can build a sealed aquarium, a sealed ecosphere, with a thick, a dense amount of life inside. I am so happy. Um, I've sped it up just a little bit and played with the footage just so you can see all the ostracods flying around and just covering everything in the substrate. Uh, this is awesome. I could not have asked for a better result for this project. I don't know why they're all down here at the bottom. You would think that they would be like near the duckweed. Uh, but down here we also have a, a bladder snail. It's a little bit larger than the others. Uh, so, you know, this must be an adult. But uh, I call it dwarfing when they don't get very big, when they stay in a sealed project like this. And I don't know if that's because of the food they have available or the oxygen. But if you look closely, you can even see that the substrate in this aquarium in this ecosphere, the substrate is alive. It is alive, you guys. There are so many tubaflex worms down here. This is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe it. That snail's going to turn around, I guess, and go back the other way. He must be looking for food as well. But if you look closely, you can see all of the worms in here. Wow. Here's a better shot. 
Now, I apologize. I know this isn't the best footage. I'm still learning to use my new equipment, and I'm still on the lookout for better cameras, better uh, lenses, anything I can do to film these very tiny creatures uh, more appropriately, more effectively. But keep in mind, this is a sealed ecosystem in a jar. So I can't, like, you know, take some samples out and put it in front of a microscope, you know, that would defeat the purpose of the whole experiment. I had a commenter recently ask us why we uh, sealed the jars up. They said it was infantile or something. But to me, when you seal up an ecosphere, that starts the, the, the beginning of the experiment. You know, seeing what you included, see if, if you can terraform a, an empty world uh, with the proper species the proper plants and algae samples to build a new ecosystem. And that's why we seal them up. It's like a unique challenge, you know. But here it is. This is a 62-ounce jar uh, with a sealed locking lid. We planted it with duckweed, several different kinds of duckweed, dayflower, uh, java moss, and some java ferns. The java ferns did not succeed. Unfortunately, they failed. Uh, but we built this with compost uh, that was made from oak leaves in my very own backyard along with some river silt that we collected and processed ourselves. So this project is really cool. I'm very happy. It's so full of life, you guys. This is awesome. Thank you so much for watching the 150-day update on our sealed 62-ounce Wallstad-style ecosphere. Please like, subscribe, check out my channel for more. Let me know what you think. Uh, offer tips and suggestions. I'm open to everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you again very soon.